This is an official recording of Desert Stars, an unofficial Warhammer 40k story. Written and narrated by Delio Pera. Music and other sounds by Mad Cow. Chapter 42 Rory, Zoellen, and Link. Achella is 42. Rory fired up Maze's engines, the Void Hauler's cargo manager voxed. Ipswich Maze, I have you fifth in line to exit. Please keep your engines below 3% output. Copy, Rory voxed back. He leaned back in his seat and spun to give Zoel in a smirk for no better reason than it striking his fancy to do so when a shadow passed over his face. Hovering over his shoulder was the silent specter, Link. God almighty! Rory jumped. Emperor alive, you've got to stop doing that, Link. Please, <sighs> make some noise when you're that close to me. You're terrifying. The machine can move without sound if it wished, and it could move anywhere it wanted. Rory had seen it scuttle across the ceiling of Ipswich, condense its mass into a form resembling a centipede, and crawl through a space so small Rory wouldn't have been able to get his own head into the same spot. And anywhere Link went, Von Peps was right there. The two had become inseparable. Where there was one, the other was nearby, which was something Rory was still trying to get used to, because it was Von Peps he saw and heard far more than Link, which was all wrong. Von Peps was a servo skull, the size of a human head, tiny compared to the full mass of Link, and yet it was a Link that was the one continually popping up where you never expected. The time Link had been on the ceiling, Rory hadn't noticed until one of its mechadendrites had uncoiled and slithered down from above. At first, Rory thought it was a wire that had come loose. That was far more plausible than the truth. After the first, another three parts of Link followed, and Rory realized the machine had spread itself over the entire ceiling of the common room. For a time, it was the whole ceiling. Rory had fallen to his butt and scooted into a wall as Link gathered itself together and dropped from above. My apologies, Link said through Von Peps. I will edit myself right now. Von Peps' eyes filled with static for a second, then cleared to an amber green. I will make sounds when nearby from now on. Good. Thank you. So... What are you going to tell us what you've got cooking in that head of yours, Cap? No, <sighs> Rory groaned. Please, I told you, I don't like that nickname, Zoe. She hissed. <sighs> and I told you, I hate that one. He lifted his brows. Then stop calling me Cap. Fine. What are we doing here, Rat? No? Snake? Why not Rory? Ugh, it's so boring. Have you... Ever met another Rory? Huh? I didn't think so. We're going to meet a contact of mine. A, a pair of them, actually. They're twins. The Goiny twins. Mikel and Tavi. Link, Von Peps said. Okay. The Goinies of Asilgo. And what are they going to tell us? If I knew that, we wouldn't be here. No, of course not. But you must have a reason for wanting to talk to them. The Vox crackled to life. Ipswich Maze, you're clear for departure. Fly safe and may the Emperor watch over you. Thanks, and he you. Rory flicked the Vox off and throttled up to 10%. The cargo exit hall ended at a wall in another 50 yards, and Rory nosed Ipswich down 45 degrees to point at an opening with the expanse of space on the other side. Far distant stars littered the blackness, as Rory pushed the engines up to 25%, and they left the void hauler behind, larger celestial bodies came into view. Largest of all was the planet of Asilgo. It's different. Rory tapped a control panel, flipped a series of switches, and turned a knob. A large screen folded down from where it had been nested up against the cockpit ceiling. On it was Asilgo, only on the screen it was magnified ten times. He turned the knob another few clicks, and ten times was doubled. White splotches became clouds, 
The landscape was an oil canvas of running grays, murky greens, and dull browns. When was the last time you were here? Zoellen leaned onto her armrest a little farther and stared at the screen. Eh, uh, five years? At least that. Hey, Von Peps, Link, how long? He turned around to look for the pair and found the space behind him empty. Where in the warp did they go? Above you, Rory, came Von Pep's voice, the one that the skull had been using ever since the pairing between it and Link. What the- Rory looked up. Sure enough, Link was doing its reverse spill thing again. The whole of its mechanical body was spread over the entire cockpit roof. Bits of its tattered robe hung in flaps. Megadendrites dangled and writhed in the air. Oh, for- <clears throat> Why do you do that, Link? What's the deal with the ceiling? Why do you go up there and why can't I hear you do it? How did that much metal crawl onto the ceiling without making a sound? It wasn't right. It's warm up here, Link said. I'm not used to the cold. Norso's moon was a constant hundred and two. The lubrication in my various joints begin to congeal if I sit in the cool too long. The temperature you keep your ship at is a full 30 degrees less than what I prefer. Imagine if the interior of Ipswich Maze was 34 degrees. I do not think you would like that very much. No, I wouldn't. I can bump the heat up a bit, but I can't handle 102. How about 75? A 70 degree increase is hardly a compromise for you. Well, no one asked what I'd like. Zoellen looked from Rory up at Link. True. Apologies, Miss Zoellen. What temperature do you find most agreeable? Hey, whoa, my ship. I get the final... Rory bit the inside of his lip. He'd tried this way of leading when he had his previous crew, being the boss, the guy, the one that made all the calls and had the last word in all things. It got tiring and old. It was time for a new approach. Okay. Yeah, that's good. We'll all say what temperature we like and find a happy place we can agree on. A hundred and two Fahrenheit, Link, Von Peps said before Rory had even finished speaking. All right, the heat of a barren desert. Fun. Von Peps, think of us as one. Two votes for over... Wait, no. One vote. You just said so. And you? It depends more on what you're comfortable with, because I'm happy to walk around naked if it means I'm comfy. And I don't think Link would care one iota about that, but I'm not so sure about you. Rory fought the sudden desire to swallow. The impulse was oppressive. Water. I need water to drink to pass this off. She's looking at me, oh, for crying out. Now she's widening her eyes at me, and here comes a smirk. Oh, she knows, yeah, for sure she knows. Just swallow, Rory. He did, and let out a low, soft, half-groan, half-moan. So, she pinched the zipper of her body glove and pulled it down a few inches. A hundred and two? No, 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 I think we can meet in the middle at eighty. Half the difference between a hundred and two and the current sixty-eight would be eighty-five. Yeah, well, eighty-five is too damn hot. Take that massive jacket off and it won't be. Rory again bit the inside of his lip, stared Zoellen in the eyes and shook his head. I'm arguing with a machine and a woman that clearly has no issues walking around in the nude. No, I really don't, she said and pulled the zipper down past her breasts. What in holy terror is going on? They're messing with me. It's all some kind of joke. They're fooling me. 80? Okay, 80. Let's... Try that for a day. Give me at least that. This is still my ship. Zoellen and Link, who was gathering itself up and dropping back to the floor, shared a quick look. Okay. Zoellen let go of her zipper and showed Rory her palms. Okay. A day. But I'm with Link on this one. It's too damn cold in here. Rory scowled. It's what I'm used to. I'm not good with change. Just give me a day, all right? He threw himself past the two others on his way out of the cockpit, then paused before leaving. One of you take over landing us. I have the twins' coordinates locked in already. What are you going to do? Zoellen asked. Think. Think. 
You've been listening to an official recording of Desert Stars, an unofficial Warhammer 40k story, written and narrated by Delio Para. Music and other sounds by Mad Cow.